Well, I'm happy. Uh, everyone says it's our best album ever. We got great feedback from the fans and uh, most of the reviews, they are just uh, wow. Well, it feels great, a great response. And when you've spent so many years working on an album, uh, you no longer know what it sounds like. You focus on the details all the time and you don't have the big picture anymore. You no longer know what to think of it. So it's always a great um, feeling to see that people enjoy it. When it comes to reviews and critics, um, I would lie if I told you that it didn't matter to me, because it does. But this time around, uh, it's been 90% very positive, so I try to focus on the amazing reviews we've got from people who really love the music and not care that much about people who don't even listen to power metal in the first place. And the fans have been very welcoming, and especially as the new guy, I've felt nothing but uh, appreciation from our fans. Thank you. I was very happy um, about um, how the fans and, and uh, web scenes welcomed the, the album, because uh, not only did, did a great work uh, on this one, we all did a great work. I didn't have the, the, the hardest parts, but if you really like the music you're playing, it's always nice to see that, that some other people are also liking it. And uh, it's like a present. And it's also really nice to see that new people are attracted by, by uh, our music. Well, it's a little bit of both, because on one end I know where I'm going with the main story, and on the other end, I have all these uh, songs in progress. Uh, they all have their different moods and atmospheres, and I see them like scenes from a movie. So I just have to pick them and try to build a coherent story, diverse also. And then later, I will get into the details of that story when I write the lyrics. No, my cats take care of the damage in the morning anyway. I don't have to bang on anything at breakfast. Um, I do bang on my steering wheel when I drive, of course, and at work my neighbor is pretty nice not to complain about my constant tapping. Uh, okay, so the way I write drums is Tony first sends um, a demo that will have programmed on the computer. And uh, I work with these files all the way through and I go back and forth between my real kit here, uh, my electronic kit that's plugged to my computer and just fiddling with the, the drums directly on the, on the computer. So I try to write more as a listener than a drummer and actually it's something that I saw Hans Zimmer talk about recently which I thought was uh, completely accurate when he writes a new theme for a movie he sits at his piano and he will not put his hands on the piano first because when you do that you're working from muscle memory so you tend to play always the same things because you know you're used to playing them and it's the same thing with drums if I start right away sitting in the drums I'm gonna go with what I know already I'm gonna go the easy route. I'm gonna you know, keep my uh, my reflexes and uh, I try to make it a bit different when I can. It's easier for me to do it when I just sit in front of a computer and as a listener think, huh, how do I want this part to sound? And then I come and play it actually on the drums and I can see that I can add this thing, this element, which would uh, make it sound uh, you know, even more interesting. So it's a combination of both. Um, classical music, of course, uh, movie scores, uh, a lot of Celtic, uh, medieval, and any traditional music. Um, a little bit of pop, of jazz, of um, even circus music. You can have that in that count. Probably I'd have to say musical theater. Mostly because I'm a big musical theater fan, but I also think it's uh, somehow connected to how I how I try to 
catch the atmosphere and bring out the lyrics of the song. In some ways it's similar to uh, how I would work with a musical theater song. So, if I had to choose one, it will be it will be musical theater. And when it comes to arranging choirs and stuff like that, I would say classical music because that's how I learned to arrange back in the day. Um, yeah, one of the things that I've always loved about the music in Cantis is that it's really limitless. There's no uh, official line that we should not cross and uh, on the previous albums I already had some kind of jazzy parts uh, but on this one the new thing is I'm adding uh, blast beats at some point I have some of them in uh, the song uh, rivers can fly it doesn't last that long but it's there and of course in the song mad clown uh, I'm actually stealing stuff from like brutal death metal where they will split things up between the right hand on the toms and fill the triplet with the legs so it sounds crazy and uh, but it comes from it's often used in brutal death metal but now it's in a country song And you even have something even crazier, uh, which I thought was very funny when I did it. It's in the song uh, Without a Hero. There's a middle section where I received the demo from Tony and the, this, it had this um, synthesizer which was looping. And to me, it really sounded like a dub part. So I made it sound like, a, like a, you know, dub drums dub as in you know reggae dub and it's not something I would expect it to put in Countess but it's there so yeah you'll always find crazy stuff in Countess. I don't think I brought much um, things to, to Countess um, it's it's already uh, full of uh, of many things and um, Tony has a pretty nice idea of what uh, uh, it's going to sound like. He has a great uh, overall view. I'm playing what he sends uh, most of the time on this album. He did a pretty good uh, baseline job. <laughs> I brought uh, tiny passages in the, the more um, calm songs. He asked me to, to play some bass solos also. I've never been asked to, to talk about my influences on bass playing, so it's, it's hard to define. I'm, I'm a classical guitarist in the, in the first place, so it's a mix between uh, bass melodies and, uh, and classical guitar playing. Uh, and then uh, the tiny passages I brought in uh, Cosmic Soleil or, or Timeline Tragedy and Petrified Manor, uh, they are all influenced by pop music, like uh, old pop, pop rock music. Uh, I, if I show you where I come from, then you will understand more uh, about these passages. As far as the, the bass lines are concerned, Countess comes from this. Okay. Like, this is, uh, this is what I like to play. And uh, also this, because uh, it has also this kind of... Uh, funny front music aspects. And most of the time when I'm building bass lines uh, I'm, I'm thinking about these. So this is uh, these are all my all time favorite albums so uh, these and um, oh these sorry for the uh, metal hardcore metal fans because the these are well, pretty popish influences and a bit of Pink Floyd. And also, uh, I read up the bass lines in this one. <laughs> and uh, then for more modern thing, because they are already very, very old albums. I like this also. So this is my um, my very 
uh, Cora as a bass player. I'm listening to quite a lot of jazz rock and I'm also listening to quite a lot of uh, solo guitar players such as, uh, well, this one. I, this is really one of my fab, so it's, it's really old as you can see. <laughs> For this album, we got quite a good number of uh, interesting deal offers by many labels and uh, Pride and Joy was one of them. I admit I didn't know much about them, but uh, I got these positive opinions by Aurelien, and David and Frode from Aldaria and they were all saying uh, that um, Pride and Joy and Birgit, her boss, were just great and nice and professional people to work with, so there was no hesitation. We signed. When uh, offers from different uh, labels started to come in uh, and the name Pride and Joy popped up, I immediately said that this is our label because I had very good experience uh, working with them before on both the Vivaldi Metal Project, uh, Six Foot Six Project, um, Unomia and uh, Aldaria. And I know they had both the balls and the guts to really try to bring out good music uh, so for me it was a very very easy choice when Sony mentioned the label the name did not ring the bell but then I saw the name Birgit and I remember her very well because I had worked with her a few years back when I was working for a label and I had an excellent memory of her so of course that choice was easy uh, I was very happy to work with her again <laughs> 